Cupra performance brand strikes out on its own with the Formenta, a lively Spanish take on the mid-sized performance SUV concept. This coupe crossover will be a rare sight on our roads, but it deserves serious consideration from anyone wanting something just a little different in this segment. You might possibly know the Cupra brand name, but probably only as a sporty trim designation dating all the way back to 1996 and used on a whole string of Seat Ibiza and Leon hot hatches. Now, parent company Seat wants Cupra to mean more, creating, in its words, a range of unique, sophisticated performance models designed to captivate car enthusiasts. And here's the first of them, the Cupra Formenta. The Spanish Cupra nameplate, a portmanteau word encompassing cup and racing, has actually been a separate mark within the Volkswagen Group since 2018, but its first products were merely sporty versions of existing Seat models. First, the rather underwhelming Cupra Attica, then more recently the Cupra Leon. This Formenta, in contrast, is this Mark's first standalone model, the first of several designs that will, the VW conglomerate hopes, make this brand a kind of Iberian Alfa Romeo, the kind of thing Seat was always supposed to be but never really was. Originally, Cupra's forward planning was the brainchild of former Seat boss Luca De Mayo who had previously launched the Abarth nameplate for Fiat in much the same way and has now gone on to do the same for Renault's sporty Alpine brand. This Formentor, uh, named after a peninsula in Mallorca, represents all he envisioned the Cupra mark could be, blending established Volkswagen Group engineering with a performance emphasis and a bit of extra Spanish flair. It's an SUV, of course. That's the safest kind of new design for any up-and-coming brand to make these days. But, as you can see, quite a distinctive one, positioned in the crossover coupe part of the mid-sized SUV market. Think cars like Audi's Q3 Sportback and Q5 Sportback. Size-wise, a Formentor is positioned somewhere between those two products, but courts much the same kind of customer. There are a wide range of model options, all fabricated in a Barcelona factory, unlike the Cupra Attica, which is made in the Czech Republic, with the Formenta lineup split between lower powered V series models and more potent VZ variants, like this one, the faster versions of which have the 310 PS 2 litre turbo TSI engine and four wheel drive combination we're trying here, the same as that used by performance products from Volkswagen's R division. Elsewhere in the Formenta range, you can order plug-in hybrids and more affordable conventional petrol versions too. If you think it all sounds interesting, you'll want to join me, Jonathan Crouch, as I put this car to the test. Ever since the Volkswagen Group decided to buy Porsche in 2009, completing its acquisition three years later, we've been waiting for the Zuffenhausen sports car maker's legendary dynamic expertise to filter down into more affordable models made by the Wolfsburg conglomerate. But it's never really happened. Until now, this Formentor aims to reset the somewhat mediocre standards of handling prowess that tend to prevail in the mid-sized SUV segment, even among premium brand models. If it's gonna do that, it's only gonna be through handling fine tuning, because all the hardware here is straight out of the Volkswagen Group parts bin. Still, as Porsche has proved, with the right development, the most familiar engineering ingredients can deliver a remarkably engaging end result. Back in 2016, this Cupra model Spanish engineers proved that they could do almost exactly the same thing with an SUV, taking an unpromising set of Volkswagen mechanicals and in the Seat Attica, creating from them the best handling small crossover in the segment. But making a small shopping SUV handle a bit better is one thing, creating one that can credibly claim to be a cut price Porsche Macan is quite another. Not all Formentors have quite as ambitious a brief as that, 
the range, all petrol powered, actually starts with a humble 1.5 litre front driven 150 PS variant and there are versions with the VW Group's usual 2 litre TSI turbo units in conventional states of tune, plus a couple of PHEV plug-in hybrid options. But the headline Formenta variant, the one you'll probably have read about if you know anything about this car, is the one that we're trying here. A model which gets the brand's performance VZ spec and more importantly the combination of four-wheel drive and the 2.0-litre EA888 series TSI turbo engine in its fastest 310 PS level of tune as used by the Audi S3, the Golf R, Cupra's own Leon hot hatch and countless Volkswagen R performance models. On paper it's a great package and feels it as soon as the road opens up in this Formenta particularly if you've selected the right drive mode, you're setting selections from this steering wheel button accompanied by changing colours of an LED band that wraps around the cockpit. Engage Sport and the accelerator gets more responsive while the software holds the revs higher and the steering gets more direct. Move a stage further into Cupra and everything ramps up an extra stage accompanied by a continual percussive deep throated exhaust burble ready for you to jam down your right foot at which point the Formenta springs forward with a relentless wave of torque demolishing 62 miles an hour in 4.9 seconds on the way to a top speed that Porsche has shown needn't be artificially uh, restrained at 155 miles an hour but here still is take a turn at speed and particularly on a narrower road you're reminded that this is quite a wide SUV 1.9 meters without the mirrors though perhaps I'm just feeling that because the last car I tested was a Ford Puma ST but you're struck much more by the four drive electro hydraulic multi-disc systems reassuring levels of traction its software constantly monitoring numerous sources steering angle, uh, wheel speed, the yaw of the vehicle and road conditions in real time so as to always deliver power to the wheels with the most traction. Grip is enhanced by the sticky Bridgestone Chiranza tyres and torque can also be controlled between wheels on either side of the car thanks to an EDS electronic aid that locks any slipping wheel ensuring an ideal level of bite to the bitumen firing you from bend to bend with a remarkable absence of body roll for something purporting to be an SUV. Like a Porsche Macan? Not quite, but the feeling wouldn't be that far off if the body control as you swap from lock to lock was a fraction more agile and the electric steering rack a sliver more feelsome, making helm feedback heavier and more instantly responsive as you ramp up the drive modes isn't quite the same as increasing the connection between driver input and road surface, though this Formenta manages that better than any VW Group fast SUV I've tried outside of the Macan. When you're in the meaner drive modes, ride quality from the multi-link rear suspension setup isn't quite as well judged as it is with that Zuffenhausen model, but fortunately the standard adaptive damping system can be almost infinitely fiddled with via the drive mode menu's individual section. There's a slider control there, allowing you to select from no fewer than 15 damper settings changing not only the shock absorbers but also chassis controller settings too. With an engine generating this much torque, 400 Newton meters, you have to have an auto transmission of course, which swaps ratios as seamlessly as the Wolfsburg source DSG dual clutch 7 speeder usually does, though unfortunately via a set of rather cheap feeling plastic paddle shifters. Just in front of the transmission's curious centre console toggle switch is an ESP button, a press on which allows you to reset the stability system's level of support to a less intrusive sport mode. So you're all set for those rare moments on British roads when it's all about torque and tarmac. For the remaining 90% of your driving life, this Cupra manages mundane duties with the accomplishment you'd expect from a Volkswagen Group engineered performance model, offering a lesser comfort 
drive mode for suburban commuting duties and highway cruising, which it manages with decent all-round levels of refinement. There's even a built-in predictive adaptive cruise control system, which uses navigation data and a front-mounted camera to proactively amend the car's cruise speed depending on the road layout ahead, which is why I found the instrument screen often prompting me to come off the throttle in the approach to roundabouts. Now, I mentioned the other powertrain options earlier. I need to cover those off for you, given that not all Formenter folk will be wanting to tear up the tarmac. As mentioned earlier, the range kicks off with a 1.5 litre TSI 150 PS model, the only one in the range that can be had with a manual gear shift, which I would anticipate might struggle a little with the task of propelling over 1.6 tonnes of Cupra up the road. Though the performance figures look okay, 62 miles an hour from rest occupying 8.9 seconds en route to 127 miles an hour. Plus this base variant must do without the multi-link rear suspension used elsewhere in the range, so crashes a bit more over bumps. All of which means that if budget permits in your search for a mainstream version, you're probably better off looking at the more conventionally tuned versions of the 2-litre TSI power plant, which comes in two flavours. One with 190 PS and four-wheel drive, making 62 miles an hour in 7.1 seconds on the way to 137 miles an hour, and the other with 245 PS and front-wheel drive, making 62 miles an hour in 6.8 seconds on the way to 148 miles an hour. Rather curiously, none of these powertrain options incorporate the Volkswagen Group's latest mild hybrid technology. For any kind of engine electrification at all in this Cupra, uh, you've to stretch to an e-hybrid variant with the plug-in hybrid tech that I mentioned earlier, only offered with front-wheel drive. As with the Cupra Leon e-hybrid, what you get here is a tried and tested VW Group PHEV package, though in the Formenta it comes in a detuned 204 PS guise as well as in Golf GTE style 245 PS form. Either way, a 150 PS 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine is mated to a 6 speed DSG auto gearbox and an 85 kilowatt electric motor powered by a 13 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery with a WLTP rated all electric driving range quoted at 34 miles. Which, of course, you won't get anywhere near if you explore the quoted all-electric top speed of 80 miles an hour or start trying to throw the thing around too much. An extra curb weight addition of up to 60 kilograms discourages you from doing that anyway. Try and stretch to the 245 PS variant if you can, which gets torque boosted from 350 to 400 newton meters without any detriment to driving range, improving the 0 to 62 mile an hour time from 7.8 to 7 seconds dead. A few other things to polish off before we finish this section. Uh, one is the availability of a top flagship variant, the Formenta VZ5, which I haven't mentioned previously because it'll be rarer than hen's teeth. The formula is quite tempting here. Uh, Cupra has shoehorned in the 2.5 litre five cylinder turbo engine from the Audi RS3 uh, provided in a 390 PS state of tune, which propels you to 62 miles an hour in just 4.2 seconds. Plus you get beefier Acabono brakes and a wider track to accommodate bigger 20 inch wheel rims. Now the downside is an asking price right in Porsche territory, which might put you off even before you'd consider the fact that the Spanish maker is refusing to make VZ5s in right hand drive. Equally irrelevant, but worth mentioning, is the fact that for some reason, Cupra thinks it's necessary to give this car some degree of off-piste prowess. There's an off-road drive mode and uh, a hill descent control system too for slithering down slippery slopes. Uh, the sort of thing that would be extremely ill-advised in a car with such a low ride height. The Formentor is a tarmac tool, and if you've stayed with me this far, you'll know that it's a very accomplished one. Would I prefer a Porsche Macan instead? The obvious answer is yes, before a few realities set in. 
you'd need a Macan S costing £10,000 more to get near the performance of the 310 PS4 Menta and that Porsche wouldn't go as quickly and would probably add £15,000 to your budget if you equipped it to a comparable spec at which point this Cupra starts to look very attractive and if you agree you need to try one surprises are in store Designer Alejandro Messonaro Romanos has clearly relished being given a clean sheet from which to create Cupra's first standalone model. What we've ended up with is a low riding crossover with a rather menacing, brooding presence about it and a car that visually only just about qualifies for the term SUV. In VW Greek terms, it's as much Golf R Estate as Audi RS Q3. Which is rather interesting if you're the kind of person who perhaps ideally like a Lamborghini Urus but has budgetary needs that must live in the real world. The long bonnet is suggestive of the need to house some huge throbbing engine and there's certainly plenty of front end overtaking presence, all angular creases and a barely concealed dose of overtaking aggression. Nice touches include these separated circular lamps and flanking vertical slits, but you might recognise rather too much of Seat in the graphics of the LED headlights and the shape of the radiator grille with its copper-coloured brand badge that looks like something out of a Marvel comic. Size-wise, the 4.5 metre length is a fraction longer than the Cupra Attica, but the swept back SUV coupe style roofline is 100 millimetres lower, which in combination with the setback passenger cell gives the silhouette something of the look of a high riding estate. These dimensions make size categorisation difficult. In mid sized coupe crossover terms, it's somewhere between, say, a Q3 Sportback or BMW X2 and an Audi Q5 Sportback or BMW X4 which is entirely intentional and pretty much what you'd expect from a brand just starting out that has to cover a lot of bases. And do so while offering something a little different. Is there enough of that here? Perhaps. This sharp mid-level crease above the rear wheel arch is certainly distinctive and if you pay extra for it, so is Cupra's trademark matte paint, which can be had in an intricately mixed shade of petrol blue. Plus, on this top four-drive VZ variant, there are big 19-inch wheels with Brembo calipers, which, like the rim centres, have copper-coloured finishing. Even lesser variants have 18-inch alloys. Look closely, and there are even tiny detail touches, like these aero flicks on the rear wheel arches. Roof rails and extra cladding for the wheel arches and lower side sills provide the required dose of SUV-ness. Overall, it's an interesting piece of design, no question. The rear, perhaps, isn't quite as avant-garde. Stylist Messonaro Romanos has used the same seamless coast-to-coast -coast rear tail lamp design we've seen on recent sets to emphasise the 1839mm width. The tail lights are of the full LED variety, of course, and incorporate tiny Formenta script, the only mention anywhere on this car of this model's name. Lower down, there's a proper Lamborghini-style lower diffuser on this VZ variant, housing two pairs of potent rear tailpipes. All of it disguising the fact that all of this sits on a relatively humdrum Golf and Leon-style MQB Evo platform, uh, sourced from the VW Group. With so much going on outside, it would be a pity if, as with the Cupra Attica, all that had been done with the cabin was to lift in a Seat interior embellished with a few brown badges and copper coloured touches. Fortunately, that's not the case. Yes, there's a lot that's recognisable from other Seat models and the VW Group parts bin, but the Formenta, in this top spec VZ form anyway, still manages to deliver just enough of a bespoke ambience to feel a bit different. That's helped by the provision of enough budget here to allow the designers to style a unique dashboard, which appears to float. 
that's an impression created by the horizontal full LED wraparound ambient lighting strip which changes colour with drive mode selection and safety functions and runs the width of the dashboard flowing into both front doors. Napa leather upholstery is standard above entry level trim and on the V2 variant and the plusher versions of the Performance VZ models. It shrouds these race style bucket seats which feature copper coloured embellishment, the same kind of thing you'll find on these prominent centre vents as well as on the door cards and the steering wheel. The grippy leather stitched flat bottom wheel is a bespoke Cupra item of course and on plusher models, in a nod to Alfa Romeo, has two circular buttons hanging from its centre spokes, the left one for drive modes and the right one for start-stop. You have to be careful not to get them mixed up. Through the wheel you view a 10.3 inch digital cockpit instrument display differentiated from the one used in a humbler Seat Leon by a redesigned set of graphics, though the screen's functionality is exactly the same, with a steering wheel view button allowing you to vary the monitor's layout through single dial, twin dial and digital layouts, plus one that displays full screen mapping. Once you've chosen the instrument look that you want, you can then tailor what appears in the centre and two outer parts of the display according to preference using uh, these other wheel spoke buttons. The middle area shows either mapping, trip computer data or road sign display and the right side can show a compass, route guidance, a g-forces meter or audio info. Most of what you'll usually want though is customizable on the left. Most of the time you'll probably prioritize the power and torque readouts, but in this part of the monitor you can also display range, consumption and fuel readouts, or perhaps uh, engine temperatures, average speed, journey time, or safety info. Anything you can't find here, and much that you can, will feature on this big 12 inch infotainment touchscreen, which forms the centerpiece of the dashboard. Its home screen displays either with the usual scattered icons, which you can drag and drop around as on a smartphone, or with uh, three prioritised functions, say for instance for audio, uh, nav and phone, which display via diagonal graphics supposedly inspired by the diagonal uh, avenue uh, road layout in Barcelona. This screen is your portal for tailoring the driver profile mode individual menu as well as sorting out various smart assistance features, ESC stability, hill descent control and start stop, and a screen that allows for a myriad of cabin background lighting themes. And of course, you get all the usual infotainment features like navigation, radio, telephone, vehicle data, and a full link connectivity system for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. There's also an online shop that will allow you to upgrade certain elements of the car's technology after you bought it using an over-the-air update system that will allow Cupra to potentially improve the screen's functionality over time too. I wasn't quite so pleased to find this monitor also burdened with the task of climate control. Once you locate its ventilation menu options they work fine unlike the rather fiddly temperature slider controls that sit beneath the screen and there are lovely graphics and a particularly neat layout which gives you shortcut options for frequent climate needs. Warm my hands, cool my feet, defog the windows, warm my feet and fresh air. And there's an air care climber section that allows you to select the option to filter fine dust and pollen out of the air inside the vehicle. But you have to take your eyes off the road for far too long to find all of this, even if you use the provided shortcut options at the top of the display. In an Audi A3, which has fundamentally the same cabin architecture, you get a row of separate physical climate controls beneath these central vents, and this Formentor would benefit from that too. It does at least help in this regard though, that climate is one of the many things that you can control via this car's SAT derived voice control system activated by prefacing what you want with Ola Ola, which you might feel a little odd shouting out in front of your passengers. Uh, you have to shout out this phrase in an intentional tone, otherwise the screen invariably fails to respond. 
and even then sometimes doesn't or gets confused about what you're asking uh, for it to do. BMW and Mercedes do this so much better. What else? Well, I mentioned the start button nod to Alpha earlier. It would have been good if the Spanish designers had also copied that Milanese maker's lovely cool metal silver race style gear shift steering wheel paddle shifters too, rather than simply using these plastic lay on ones. The gear lever itself isn't a lever at all, but a stubby silver toggle switch in the middle of the lower console, ahead of which is a circular button you'll continually mistake for the starter button until you get used to this car. You'll have to get used to that and the small touch sensitive switch panel for the lights that's buried down here just above your right knee. Other potential irritations include the pointed clack sound that accompanies uh, central screen feature selection and the fact that if your Fermentor has this steering wheel mounted drive mode button fitted, uh, unless you want Cupra, you can't go direct to a chosen drive mode using it, but instead have to cycle through all the settings to get there, complete with the Sport and Cupra mode exhaust embellishments as you pass these drive options, which seem all a bit superfluous if all you were trying to do was to get to comfort. Uh, we'd have preferred to see a physical dial for the audio volume on the main screen too, as it is, if you don't use the steering wheel control, not always possible when you're twirling the tiller, you're stuck with this fiddly central volume slider beneath the infotainment screen. But these things aside, there's so much to like here. The driving position, for instance, you're unlikely to care much that it's relatively low set and not very SUV-like, because the result is a level of cockpit immersion that crossovers, even sporty ones, rarely offer. You'll be comfortable too, even the lower order sports seats are well shaped and these better bucket chairs are brilliantly supportive. I also love the after dark interior lighting features like the Cupra front door puddle lights and the multicolour ambient lighting system. That wraparound ambient lighting strip really comes into its own at night too, glowing blue in comfort mode, red in sport and orange when in Cupra or you can uh, really tailor your own colour settings if you wish. Storage space provision is fine with a big club box incorporating a small upper compartment, decently sized door bins and a lower centre console devoted primarily for stowage. Moving uh, forwards up the car there's this lidded bin, uh, then twin cup holders, uh, then pen trays either side of the gear switch, then a deep well at the base of the centre stack with twin USB ports, though they're both of the USB-C variety, so you'll probably also need this unsightly USB-A converter lead. Build quality from the Barcelona factory is appropriately Volkswagen-like, and forward visibility is aided by thin A-pillars, but as usual with coupe-style SUVs, your rear three-quarter view can be somewhat compromised by the sweeping D-pillar, so you'll be making plenty of use of the standard rear parking sensors and the rear view camera that's standard above base level trim. Let's take a seat in the back. You'd worry a little about rear seat headroom in anything purporting to be a coupe SUV. But this one will be fine in that regard, unless your occupants are a basketball playing stature, in which case something boxier in this class will be more appropriate. It is a bit disappointing though that the height of this centre transmission tunnel makes it so difficult for middle seat passengers to be comfortably accommodated. Two people should be quite happy though, and they'll benefit from this fold down centre armrest with its twin cup holders. Seat back pockets are provided and door cards, uh, well they get uh, angular handles and incorporate decently sized bins. There are twin USB ports, though again they're of the smaller USB-C variety, and three zone climate control is standard, which means that rear passengers get these separate controls for the twin central vents. A bit of extra light illuminates what would otherwise be a rather dark space via these small rear quarter light windows. 
and a premium feel is delivered by the copper stitched door cards and the twin beamed overhead reading lights. There are also more coat hooks than you could possibly need on the B pillar and the overhead grab handles on both sides. We're not so keen on these part PVC floor mats which mark easily and will quickly get really scruffy throughout a typical British winter. Let's finish this segment by taking a look in the boot. The powered tailgate, standard above base level trim, rises to reveal quite a high lip, but a square usefully sized space, the capacity of which varies depending on powertrain selection. It's just 345 litres with the PHEV E hybrid variant due to battery placement beneath the floor. But this more conventional VZ model ups that to 420 litres, a figure that rises to 450 litres with the base 1.5 TSI variant, which has a more compact rear axle. Even that though, is still 35 litres down on what you'd get in a shorter Cupra Attica. Thank the Formentor's swept back roof line for that. The cargo area has recessed compartments to the left and right and is well shaped. Even with the e-hybrid you'll cram uh, five carry-on cases in here. Disappointingly though, you can't have the adjustable height boot floor that's standard on a Golf, even as an option. There's no real space beneath the floor for it to operate, particularly with this audio subwoofer fitted. Still, this is a pretty flexible area thanks to twin bag hooks, the usual tie-down points, and a central ski hatch in the seat back so that longer items can be slid through between a couple of rear seated passengers. If you need more room, you can use these useful sidewall catches to push forward the conventional 60-40 split rear bench, which frees up this much larger 1,445 litre load area. It's more 1,475 litres on the 1.5 litre model and less 1,370 litres on the PHEVs. In both cases though, the space revealed isn't quite flat as the seat backs merely flop onto their bases. Pricing from launch started from around £27,500 for a full winter range split into a couple of parts. For the less powerful engines, you'll be choosing between two base level spec options, which have been badged V1 and V2. A somewhat unfortunate choice of Blitz associated branding, given the German engineering that fundamentally underpins this car. Anyway, these variants sell mostly below £35,000, but if you can afford more, between £34,000 and £42,000, your dealer will point you towards the VZ lineup, where all the faster engines sit. That moniker, based on the Spanish word veloz, meaning speed or fast. Now, it's the VZ variant that we've chosen to test here, equipped with the 310PS 2.0-litre TSI petrol powertrain and four-drive all-wheel drive combination that Cupra feels should typify this car. If you don't need quite as much power, you can also have this engine in 190PS form paired with four-drive in a V1 or V2, or in a 245PS state of tune in a front-driven VZ variant. At the foot of the range, a Formenta can additionally be had with a front-driven 1.5-litre TSI 150 PS petrol powertrain. This the only engine in the lineup offered with a choice of manual or auto transmission. All the more powerful units have to be had with the usual VW Group DSG 7-speed auto. Of course, virtually no new model can be launched these days without electrification. From launch, a little strangely, mild hybrid tech was missing from the spec sheet, but plug-in hybrid tech is offered. The usual VW Group 1.4 litre TSI petrol powertrain linked to an 85 kilowatt electric motor at a 13 kilowatt hour battery pack. The resulting front-driven Formenta E hybrid model puts out either 204 PS, that's in V1 or V2 trim, or 245 PS, that's in VZ spec. In the V1 and V2 range, the e-hybrid option costs around £4,000 more than a 2-litre TSI 194 drive model. In the VZ lineup, an e-hybrid version is priced at much the same level as this 4-drive 310 PS variant. Continental markets get a conventional TDI diesel powertrain too, but that's not being offered here. 
What we do get, though only in left-hand drive form, is Cupra's rare Formenta VZ5 flagship variant, which sells to those with a budget closer to £50,000 and features the 2.5-litre five-cylinder petrol turbo power plant familiar from high-performance Audis like the RS3 and the TTRS, here developing 390 PS. OK, what about rivals? Well, potentially, there are any number of mid-sized SUVs you could consider as alternatives here. The number of options swelled by the fact that this car is sized somewhere between the C and the D crossover segments, potentially appealing to customers in either class. Cupra helps us here by suggesting that this Formenta is targeted primarily at the premium brand coupe SUV sector of this part of the midsize crossover market. Characterised in the C segment by the Audi Q3 Sportback and the BMW X2, and in the D segment by the Audi Q5 Sportback, the BMW X4 and the Mercedes GLC Coupe. We've perused the price lists with this little collection of premium badged coupe SUVs and to be honest can't find anything quite like a Formenta in terms of size, performance and value. A Q3 Sportback and an X2 are both smaller than this Cupra but even if you don't care about that you might be swayed by the fact that compared to a Formenta TSI 150 a comparable Q3 Sportback 35 TFSI is around £4,500 more and a comparable X2 S-Drive 20i is around £6,500 more. If you're wondering about a Range Rover Evoque, well, the cheapest P200 petrol version of one of those is around £37,000, which is around £5,000 more than a comparable Formenta 4-drive TSI 190. Of course, you'd more closely match the least powerful Formenta TSI 150 model on value by turning to a volume brand mid-sized coupe SUV. There are a few. The Kia Exceed, the Renault Arcana and the Toyota CHR. But neither of those cars have the quality, uh, the quality feel or the uniqueness of this Cupra. It's all sounding quite promising for this Spanish nameplate, isn't it? But then very few Formenta customers are going to be looking at the smallest petrol engine. What about if your benchmark is this Formenta VZ 4Drive 310 variant? Well, this model looks equally strong value once you look at obvious alternatives. Cupra's base £40,000 asking price for this performance derivative would get you the same engine and drivetrain in a much smaller Volkswagen t rock R or Audi SQ2. Or the same sum would get you only 245 PS in an almost equally small Audi Q3 Sportback 45 TFSI S-Line Quattro. Another coupe SUV with a similar drivetrain and output to this 310 PS Formenta is the BMW X2 M35i, but one of those costs around £47,000, £7,000 more than its Cupra. A Volkswagen Tiguan R can match the space of a Formenta, in fact it improves on it, while offering the same engine and drivetrain, but that Volkswagen also costs around £47,000, as does, by the way, a 245 PS entry-level Porsche Macan. Since the German premium brands can't get close to this Cupra's value proposition with their smaller coupe SUVs, it goes without saying that their larger ones are even further away from it. The larger models only available in forms competing with variants in the VZ part of the Formenta range. A Q5 Sportback 45 TFSI Quattro with 245 PS costs around £3,000 more than this Formenta VZ 4 Drive 310 PS variant. While a Mercedes GLC Coupe 300 Formatic with 260 PS costs around £7,000 more. A word about the value proposition of the front-driven e-hybrid Formenta variants. Now, at the time of this test, in spring 2021, the Formenta e-hybrid was priced in V1 to a 4 PS form from around £36,000 and in VZ1 245 PS guys from just under £39,000. In terms of coupe SUV plug-in hybrid rivals, well yes, against the 204 PS Formenta variant, you could conceivably consider Kia's Exceed PHEV at around £30,000, but that uses a slightly less powerful engine with a smaller battery. Otherwise, because Toyota doesn't do a plug-in version of their CHR, 
Uh, you can't get a PHEV version of sister brand Lexus's UX crossover either. Your next class option would see you needing to stretch right up to around £40,000 for BMW's smaller X2 xDrive 25e, though that car admittedly does have four-wheel drive. If you're looking at an outlay of around £39,000 upwards on a more powerful Formenta e-hybrid VZ245 PS model, then you'll be interested to know that an Audi Q3 Sportback 45 TFSi e with the same engine costs considerably more, and that the cheapest Range Rover Evoque P300e is close to £45,000. Mercedes GLC Coupe plug-in models only come with diesel power, BMW doesn't offer this tech on the X4 at all, and the cheapest Audi Q5 Sportback TFSi e model costs from around £53,000. Enough. We've crunched the figures and specs on this Iberian model's value proposition, so you don't have to. If, having considered this, you conclude, as we have, that there's nothing quite like a Formentor in the segment, then you'll be interested to know just how generous the Spanish maker has been when it comes to standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. Even with base V1 trim, customers get quite a lot. 18 inch performance alloy wheels, LED headlights with dynamic range control, front fog lamps with a cornering function, tinted rear windows, uh, power folding mirrors, auto headlamps and wipers, keyless entry, rear parking sensors and an anti-theft alarm. Driving aids include a speed limiter for highways and urban areas, an electronic locking differential with dynamic traction support for fast tight cornering, a driving profile driving mode system with various key driving modes, and a whole range of active camera features for safety, which we'll get to in a few minutes. All fomenters also get a clever predictive adaptive cruise control system. Now this uses GPS data feeds delivered from the navigation system and inputs from both the car's standard dynamic road sign display setup and the front mounted camera to proactively amend your Formenta's cruise speed depending on the layout ahead. Uh, bends, roundabouts, junctions, uh, changes in speed limits and built up areas. This reduces the requirement for driver input and mitigates against sudden speed changes and maneuvers. What else? Well, inside with base V1 trim, there's a 10.3 inch digital driver binnacle, copper stitch sport seats, a leather stitch multifunction flat bottom steering wheel, three zone climate control, and a wireless smartphone charger. Media features are taken care of by a 12 inch navigation screen with voice recognition that, as well as 3D mapping, incorporates online infotainment with an embedded eSIM, which means that the car will never lose its connection with the digital world and allows users access to the latest infotainment apps and over the air updates. This setup only lasts for 12 months though, uh, before you have to pay an annual subscription for it. Online infotainment also uses cloud-based real-time traffic information to uh, embellish the navigation system, plus it can brief you on parking spaces, speed cameras and fuel stations along your route, and can allow you to access online radio so that you can listen to stations from all around the world. That's in addition to all the usual infotainment features that you normally get on a screen in a car, like a DAB audio setup, Bluetooth, uh, vehicle data and a full length connectivity system in this case for wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Now as with Seat models there's also remote access though again only for the first year of ownership after which time a subscription is payable. This allows you to use a Cupra Connect app to remotely lock or unlock your Formenta from wherever you are. If you've forgotten where you parked it, it'll give you area notification. And if having got that, you still can't find your car in a crowded car park, the Connect app will allow you to remotely activate either the alarm, uh, the headlights, or the horn. It'll also give you a vehicle health report, help you schedule servicing, and give you various elements of extra driving data. Plus the app can tell you if someone using your Cupra is driving at faster than a preset speed. And it can alert you if the car is ever stolen. 
This app also has various online features. Uh, you can use it for traffic information, route calculation, and info on local parking spaces and fuel stations. With PHEV plug-in hybrid variants, this app will allow you to remotely manage battery charging and climate preconditioning too. The vast majority of Ford Mentor customers though will be looking further up the range, which if the fastest two engines aren't required, will mean stretching to V2 trim. The extra cash for that gets you a few features that'll give this Cupra more of a premium feel. Larger 19 inch exclusive wheels, extra leather stitched cabin trim, uh, that's coverings for the dashboard, the door inserts and the side trim panels and branded Nappa leather heated bucket seats with power adjustment and memory settings. At this level, you also get a heated steering wheel, a powered tailgate, a rear view camera, and on the e-hybrid, a virtual pedal system that can increase brake energy regeneration. As mentioned earlier, if you want to choose from the faster engines on offer, you'll need instead to consider a VZ model like the one that we have here, identifiable to a dedicated Cooper enthusiast by this rather serious looking rear diffuser. These quicker variants get a few extra driving aids, uh, dynamic chassis control, adaptive damping, speed sensitive steering and sports suspension with front shock absorption and quite a few more camera safety features. Again, we'll cover those off in a few minutes. Those 19 inch exclusive wheels and part PVC, part cloth trim bucket seats also feature. Cupra expects more potential customers to go for this VZ2 version though, at which point your Formenta will start to look and feel a bit more serious. At this level, twin exhausts sprout from the rear diffuser and the steering wheel gains two hanging circular buttons, one for drive modes and the other for start-stop. Plus, as you'd hope, the VZ2 variants get some of the Cupra niceties we mentioned earlier, uh, Nappa leather upholstery, heat and power adjustment, along with memory settings for the bucket seats and some extra leather stitched interior trim. There's some extra camera safety stuff too. The next stage up, VZ3 trim has the same spec, but with the addition of copper colouring and Brembo brakes for the 19 inch wheels. In this guise, your Formenta could easily be confused with the limited run VZ Edition variant, which was made available just after launch, and which, as well as the copper coloured 19 inch wheels, also included a panoramic glass roof and special magnetic tech grey paintwork. And there, the mainstream Formenta range ends. But I also ought to mention the uber rare left hand drive only five cylinder high performance VZ5 variant. Now this gets huge 20 inch copper machined wheel rims with 18 inch Acabono brakes featuring copper calipers. There's also a carbon fibre rear diffuser with diagonal quad exhaust pipes. Plus inside with this limited run derivative, you get special cap bucket seats and a uniquely trimmed cabin with graduating graphics and a copper spot design theme to match the exclusive tiger grey exterior paintwork that's adorned with Cupra lettering and the brown badge in black chrome. Enough with standard spec, what about the options available across the Formenta range? Well, there aren't many, uh, the brand preferring to see customers wanting extra features uh, to merely move up a trim level. The main thing your dealer will want you to look at is adding in the brand's panoramic glass sunroof, though that costs nearly £1,200 more you can add a tow bar too. Otherwise, unless you count the no-cost option of swapping the colour of the Nappa leather bucket seats to petrol blue, there's nothing else to add. Providing you've taken account of the fact that you'll almost certainly be paying your Cupra dealer more for your choice of exterior paint. The only standard exterior colour is a solid white. That doesn't really do this car any favours, so you're more likely to want one of the other options. Now there are three metallic shades and three pricier premium metallic colours. This test car's graphene grey is one of those. If you can afford to blow £1,500 for your choice of paint colour, Cupra will offer you its signature matte finishes, either magnetic tech grey 
or petrol blue, the latter shade developed by Sayat for the old Leon Cupra R back in 2017 before the brand decided that this finish was too vulnerable and expensive to respray. Here, Cupra has gone ahead and offered it anyway, though with a set of very complicated washing instructions. Enough with options, let's finish with a look at driver assist systems and safety provision features which are of course the same as those you'd find on all other comparable VW Group models. There's autonomous braking of course, Cupra's system is called forward collision warning with automatic braking and as usual with these sorts of setups it scans the road ahead as you drive. If a potential collision hazard is detected you'll be warned. If you don't respond, or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Every Formenta also gets a driver alert system that continually monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness and will, if necessary, prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee. Plus, high beam assist and dynamic road sign display uh, they both feature, uh, the latter picturing traffic signs you pass, then displaying them on the dash. Also standard is a lane assist system that warns you when you stray out of your lane and applies gentle steering assistance to ease you back into it. In our experience, the lane assist can be a bit intrusive, helping when it isn't required and resetting itself on each trip so that if you don't like it, you have to keep turning the thing off. Anyway. All of this is in addition to all the more usual features that come fitted across the Formenta range, which have helped justify this car's five-star Euro NCAP safety test showing. There are twin front, side and curtain airbags, though disappointingly you don't also get an extra one to protect the driver's knees. There are, of course, uh, Isofix child seat fastenings on the rear bench. Uh, we also like the inclusion of a multi-collision brake system that recognises when an impact has occurred and brakes the car to prevent it being uncontrollably propelled into oncoming traffic. It's also worth mentioning that this Formenta's built-in eSIM is used to deliver an eCall SOS system that, in the event of an accident where the airbags are triggered, will automatically alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location. Other conventional safety features include ASR traction control and an ESC stability control system with a sport option for the reduced intervention that you might want on, say, a track day plus MSR engine braking control that'll stop you skidding if you change down abruptly on a slippery surface. If you do get into a skid, a DSR steering assistance feature will help you steer out of it. And you get an ABS braking system further assisted by brake control, which works via the ESC stability system and a brake booster and helps reduce stopping time when you really slam on all the anchors in an emergency, at which point the hazard lights will automatically flash. Plus, all Formentors get a hill hold function to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, plus tyre pressure monitoring. As referenced earlier, faster VZ models like this one get uh, more in terms of camera safety tech. With VZ1 spec, you also get two extra features. Side assist, which alerts you if you're about to dangerously pull out in front of another vehicle. And exit assist, which alerts you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. With this VZ2 spec, you also get lane change assist to help with quick lane changes. And there's an emergency assist system. Now with that, if the vehicle senses that the driver has taken his or her hands off the wheel for more than 15 seconds, as might happen if, for instance, uh, you were taken ill at the wheel, then audible and visual warnings will be given before a braking jolt. If the driver continues to fail to respond, then the Formentor will be brought to a controlled stop. Now, by the way, uh, you can add all the extra VZ series camera safety features into auto gearbox versions of the base uh, V1 and V2 variants by purchasing the available safety and driving pack XL option for £575 more. It's all very reassuring. One of the nice things about developing a performance model of any kind from a clean sheet using a Volkswagen Group platform and engineering 
is that you don't really have to worry much about efficiency. You get to concentrate on the engaging bits. All of this is providing you get all the very latest engine technology and providing that the final package doesn't weigh too much. Well, the Fulmenter doesn't get quite all of the Wolfsburg conglomerate's latest tech. Uh, mild hybrid electrification is missing. And its curb weight, uh, 1,644 kilograms on the faster models, is a touch on the portly side. Uh, though to be fair, a comparable Porsche Macan S tips the scales at nearly 200 kilograms more. And as a result, that Zuffenhausen model burns through fuel at a considerably higher rate. For mentor folk who really care about matters of efficiency might not be planning around using fuel at all, uh, not for commuting duties anyway. The Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders tells us that 94% of UK journeys are of less than 24 miles, and on that basis, the PHEV e-hybrid plug-in variants of this model offer the possibility of making trips to your local filling station a very rare occurrence indeed. There are two variants, with three quarters of customers expected to want the base 204 PS version, and the remainder preferring the VZ Spec 245 PS variant. Both derivatives boast a WLTP rated all-electric driving range of up to 34 miles, though a more realistic real-world figure would probably be in the early to mid-twenties. As we said in our driving experience section, this comes courtesy of the usual VW Group plug-in technology, which means a 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine mated to a 6-speed DSG auto gearbox and an 85 kilowatt electric motor powered by a 13 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. Of course, in deciding the budgetary case for a Formenter e-hybrid, you will of course need to factor in charging costs. But if you get your charging regime right on off-peak electricity that'll hopefully cost pennies rather than pounds to consume, those bills shouldn't be too great. The combined range of the petrol and electric motor is around 660 miles, making a plug-in for Menta an ideal comfortable car for the really long journeys that would probably defeat full EV crossovers in this class like, say, a Lexus UX 300e or a BMW iX3 or Cupra's own Born EV. And the electrified version of this Cupra will charge much quicker than a full EV. Uh, powering a PHEV Formenter up from a domestic socket would take around five hours, but using a garage wall box, you'll be able to reduce your charging time period to around three and a half hours. Bear in mind that only a single Mode 3 charging cable is included as standard. The quoted WLTP combined cycle fuel return for a Formenter E-Hybrid 204 PS model is up to 235.4 mpg. For the VZ245 PS e-hybrid variant, it's up to 188.3 mpg. And the CO2 reading that'll see your BIK tax payments rated at just 11% is an impressive 27 grams per kilometre. That's for the 204 PS version. For the 245 PS variant, it's uh, 33 grams per kilometre. Now these are pie in the sky figures, of course. If you don't charge your Forment or e-hybrid much and use uh, quite a bit of throttle, you'll be burning plenty of fuel and possibly getting through quite a few sets of front tyres too. A diesel model might rival an e-hybrid Formenta for real-world day-to-day fuel consumption that would cost quite a bit more to tax, but Cooper isn't offering a black pump fueled engine for our market, so your only other option if you prioritise frugality with this Spanish SUV is to choose the entry-level 1.5 litre TSI 150 PS variant which manages up to 44.8 miles to the gallon and 143 grams per kilometre of CO2 in manual form, or up to 42.2 miles to the gallon and up to 151 grams per kilometre as an auto. Next up is the 2 litre TSI 190 4 drive DSG auto variant, the readings for which are up to 37.7 miles to the gallon and up to 171 grams per kilometre. Then the 2 litre TSI 245 PS DSG auto, which manages up to 36.7 miles to the gallon and up to 174 grams per kilometre. For this performance orientated 2 litre TSI 4 drive 310 PS DSG auto model, the figures are up to 33.2 miles to the gallon. Uh, we've not done any better than a high 20s figure on this test. 
and the official emissions reading is up to 193 grams per kilometre. The latter figure means that this model's benefiting kind taxation exposure is up at 37% and requires you to pay a £1,910 first year rate for vehicle excise duty. For comparison, the Formenta e-hybrid owner would have a first year VED rate to pay of just £10. Whichever Formenta variant you select, you can monitor its ongoing frugality via selectable consumption readouts on the left hand side of the digital instrument binnacle screen. There's a sign off screen when you power off that gives you average consumption too. You get a slightly larger 55 litre fuel tank with this 310 PS performance variant. It's 50 litres for the more conventional petrol models and just 40 litres for the e-hybrids. Prompts from the predictive adaptive cruise control system are useful in saving that fuel. This setup uses GPS data feeds delivered from the navigation system and inputs from both the car's standard dynamic road sign display system and the front mounted camera to proactively amend your Formenta's cruise speed depending on the road layout ahead uh, when you're approaching bends, roundabouts, junctions and changes in speed limits. The DSG gearbox also incorporates a function allowing the engine to slumber briefly at cruising speeds too. And servicing? Well, as with SEAT models, you're looking at a garage visit every 10,000 miles or every 12 months, whichever comes first. At point of purchase, you can opt for a two-year prepaid servicing plan with an affordably uh, set monthly payment scheme. What else? Uh, well, in the current market, the three-year 60,000 mile warranty cover isn't particularly generous. The paintwork warranty lasts for three years, and as you'd expect, uh, this car is protected by a 12-year anti-corrosion package. The Formenta e-hybrids have a separate 8-year battery warranty, which also covers the battery for up to 100,000 miles. What about residual values? Well, according to CAP, a Formenta VZ2 310PS 4-drive variant like this one is expected to retain up to 48% of its P11D value after three years of use, slightly better than you'd get from an established performance model like a Golf R, and a very decent return on investment for a new brand entrant in this class. Insurance groupings for mainstream Formenta variants start at 19p or 20p for the base 1.5 TSI version, for the 2 litre TSI 190 PS 4 drive derivative, it's group 25p. The 2 litre TSI 245 PS VZ variant is rated at group 27p. And this 2 litre TSI 310 PS 4 drive VZ model attracts a rating of group 33p. As for the e-hybrid models, well the 204 PS variant gets a group 24p rating and the VZ 245 PS version is rated at group 26p. Cupra has tried to do something quite difficult here, namely take a lot of existing mechanicals and create something genuinely interesting and different from them, a particularly hard job in a market already awash with crossover clones. But with this Formenta, they very nearly managed it. This car looks distinctive, it drives well, and various models offer extremes of either performance or efficiency to suit differing needs. The cabin is classily trimmed, lighting up beautifully at night, and there's all the kudos of owning a performance brand none of your friends will have heard of, yet a car with a completely proven set of underpinnings. All of which means that with this Formenta, the story of the Cupra brand has at last begun in earnest. It's difficult to forge your own identity when you've spent most of your time helping to define performance models from another brand, in this case, Seat. But with this car, the whole Iberian Alfa Romeo thing starts to make some sort of sense. After all, the Formenta is potentially fast, as well as being practical and interesting to look at. And for the time being anyway, you might even think it to be a touch exotic. Whether you actually get what's been promised here, essentially a Porsche Macan, a BMW X4 or a Mercedes GLC Coupe distilled down into something more affordable, is a judgement you might actually rather enjoy making. We're not quite convinced, but we have seen enough to feel hopeful 
about the Cupra brand's future. Can they really be Latin spirit in everyone? If the mark can deliver that, there's a place for it in the market.